finally we are ready to discuss the uh, the crux of it all, right? The central protagonist of the standard model, the Higgs boson, which was desperately searched for, and it's still being probed. Okay, we have not yet proven, as I will be explaining, its existence. Or well, that is to say, all the properties. So the Higgs boson actually is 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 really the proof of its existence. Is a proof of the theory of the origin of mass. Something remarkable how it involved the. Uh, I mean, how did we get there? It's good to have once again a recollection how it all started. Okay, we had a QED, a U1 gauge theory of electromagnetism, quantum theory. Of course, we are talking of elementary particles. These are 50s, it is now in the 50s. It's a great success of the renormalizability, the work of. Feynman, Schwinger, Tomonaga will lead in 1961 by Glashow an attempt to have the SU2 cross U1 gauge theory of electroweak interactions. There is some noise, someone is not muted. Please check your microphones. As you do on gross one grade series, but what remains a problem of mass. We know that MW is not zero, neither is MZ, but that is bad. That is a Proca theory. So we have bad propagators. Remember once again, the delta mu nu, for example, of Z would be minus I, Q square minus MZ square, G mu nu minus Q mu, Q nu over MZ square. This is bad. This will lead to the Higgs mechanism as a cure. This is the crowning achievement Weinberg in 67. Don't put the mass by hand, use the Higgs mechanism, the vacuum expectation value non-zero of the Higgs doublet. This is the celebrated Higgs doublet. We studied it and what we learned that we can go to the arc psi gauge and the arc psi gauge phi is equal to E to the, we can write in various ways. We can write like this. And expand. If you just keep leading terms as you wish. You keep the GIs, remember, and we find out that the propagator is in the arc psi gauge. That Z propagator, for example, would be with a Higgs gauge. So let's call it arc psi. This was a PROCA. Today we call it unitary gauge, was minus I 
Q square minus MZ square. I wrote it many times, but it does no harm to repeat. G mu nu, it was psi minus one, Q mu, Q nu, Q square. Now it's well behaved. Look at Q square minus psi MZ square. This is a great achievement. It's well behaved. The crucial protagonist in this game is the Higgs boson, which is physical. Remember, GI are not physical. They are like longitudinal components of the photon. You can always go, you won't be able to compute loot. You can always go to unitary gauge. You get rid of them. Not good for loops, but good to understand physics. Phi unitary is zero V plus H. Here is the summary. It takes me less than 10 minutes. Of course, it's telegraphic. You see, just in order to be able to compute, it's a sort of interesting that nature conspires to help us have a theory which works. This is sort of, but it works only because we are dumb. We don't know how to compute unless it's perturbative. And if it has to be perturbative, it has to be renormalizable. And the Higgs mechanism is just a tool to make it renormalizable. And yet it is actually a theory of nature, okay? This is what we call the Higgs boson. And we found out its interactions. H interacts proportional to mass. Let's write it down. Once again, so it interacts with fermions. What is the interaction? It is G over two, M fermion over MW we found out, Higgs, F bar F. Here it is, the crucial thing. Gauge bosons. We found out G, MW, W plus W minus. Plus one half. G over cosine theta W, Z, Z, Z square. I can put mu if you like. As promised, proportional to mass. There is also a coupling to the Higgs, if you want to itself. Not so important. We are not yet probing that. It's still hard, but let's write it down. There is a coupling, which is, for example, lambda over four, h to the fourth. M h square. M fermion, it's all coming from this vacuum expectation value. And lambda is obviously. We can write, this is lambda over eight m h square over v square h to the fourth. 
I can write with MW, it doesn't matter. The important thing, it's always Higgs mass. It's always the mass. Oh, what was missing here? Nobody noticed MZ. It wouldn't be good. It has to be proportional to MZ. And then I asked the question yesterday, why? Is it so hard? Why hard to produce Higgs? The answer is that the machines that we use are based on fermion, anti-fermion scattering, or fermion, fermion scattering. We just write FF scattering. It's really, of course, Higgs is neutral, so it's gonna be fermion, anti-fermion. Well, let's be fermion, anti-fermion scattering. What kind of machines we have? What are these machines? There was the, the lab type, which is EE bar collider, or there was Tevatron, which is PP bar collider, or LHC, which is PP collider. But bottom line is the proton is made of UUD. It's always the quarks that collide. And we have the problem that M electron is roughly M light quark, which is a water of MeV. This is the problem. By quark, now I will always mean up or down quark at the moment in the machines. These are our stable quarks. It would be nice if I could use a top quark, but top quark decays. So I need stable particles in my machine. And therefore, Yukawa Higgs, which is G over two M fermion over MW is some number in the machines of order of 10 to the minus three, roughly. Too small. Compare this, you know, take the EE bar machine. You need to produce the Z boson. Well, here is your coupling. T3. Some numbers, I don't really have to worry about this. Of order one, G's of order one. So this is a number of order one. C boson. So of course, you see, whereas at left, you produce 10 to the nine Z bosons. You produce zero Higgs, basically. And you have to be a little more serious now and enter into the nitty gritty because now I need your help. This is of course, direct production. We are talking here of direct production through the light particles. So if I want to produce the Higgs, which particles should I use somehow? Hmm. 
which particle is good to produce the Higgs from the couplings? Which particles are not light? When I say light, let me be more clear here. I have one scale, the, so the mass scale in question, this is very important because mass is a dimension full. Mass scale is the scale of weak interactions. Which is that scale? That's the scale of order MW. So light particles, when we speak in the standard model, are the particle whose mass is much smaller than MW. And we can call them heavy particles or not light particles. Whose mass is on the order of MW. It cannot be much bigger in the standard model. The masses are on the order of MW. So what I'm asking you, which particle should I use to produce the Higgs? We have to figure this out. This is the most important particle in the world. We have to you understand, you and I have to, we'll go and ask the money later. We just need to figure out which particles to produce, how we, you have to go to the funding agencies and tell them, I have an idea how to produce the Higgs. But they tell you, look, are you gonna use this electron quark? No, no, you're saying that's too small. So what can I, what should I use? I thought about top quarks and anti quark. About the things that uh, you can't find actually at free quarks. So, okay, so one possibility. Okay, so good particles, let's call them to produce Higgs. Okay, you are saying top quark. Very good. What else? Yeah, Why? Because M top is a water M double. Actually, it's even heavier, but that's what we call. Sorry, what did you say? I think Z boson. Z boson or W boson. Why just Z? If you tell me Z, in principle, both of them. So let's just put them in one category. Yes. Very good. I have to invoke this particle. You see, now we go and think. So look, people are always building EE bar machine. We can even do it before lab. We go to people and say, let's build the lab machine. Let's build, so let's start with order. Let's build first one EE bar machine. It's a clean, beautiful machine. People love this. This is called lab. You, you will see the, the problem with the EV, but there will be a problem, okay? We call it lab, large electron positron collider. This is large. Electron. large electron positron collider. Now you will see the problem. Lap. The trouble is, you see what is good is to do the circular machine because you can keep accelerating them so you can reach higher energies. Linear has a problem that you only have a certain distance to travel. So people say, you know, people fight a lot about it. Circular winds, so we accept the circular. You see, the problem is now it will have fixed energy. 
and you don't know the mass of the Higgs. You see, the trouble is you don't know whether you're going to be lucky. And they built what they could. They actually built an impressive machines. People say, let's, big as, let's build as big as possible. It was a huge thing, 27 kilometers circumference. This is the French Swiss border. It goes below little villages in a charming, beautiful farmhouses, little town, countryside. Hard to imagine that below that, there is this monster that does the greatest physics today. Fixed energy, the energy of lab in the center of mass was around 200. I think the number is 205 GeV. This is what they could come up with. So how do I produce the Higgs? I cannot produce it directly. So I have EE e bar, I have EE e bar, which is EE e propagating or E bar entering. I try to produce it directly, my Higgs boson. Doesn't work, too weak, as we said. Now you gave me an idea. You said, let's do the following. Here we are. E, e. You say produce the Z boson. We'll think about W. Let's produce the Z boson directly. What now? What's the next step? This I can produce very easily. Sorry? Yeah, then Z boson can decay into a fermions and anti fermions. Z boson can decay. I need to produce the Higgs. I'm not talking about the Z boson. Z boson, we will. We are looking for Higgs. Of course, Z boson has been studied. There are billions. Okay, this is the factory. This is called the Z factory. You will get ten to the nine Z bosons. Yeah, yeah, sure. This is how we studied it. This is what for your homework were. So from here, you study the M of the Z boson. You studied the decay width of the Z boson. You have you you studied the decay uh, channels. You know all this beautiful thing that we know about the Z boson. It's very easy when you have a billion of them. Okay, with high precision. Okay, this is fantastic. I don't have much to say here because it's kind of obvious. But okay, I appreciate your point. This is. You are telling me I should speak of the Z boson first. I didn't want to do that because this is kind of obvious. And therefore the Z decays. Once I produce it, the Z, it again decays back into FL bar. And I can study each individual thing. I can study the electron, the muon, the tau, whatever it comes to my mind. I can try to, uh, you know, uh, whatever, quarks. We have to think, of course, what are quarks in the experiment? I have to come back to it. There are no quarks. We produce actually hadrons. But through this, I can do a beautiful study of the Z boson. But Higgs, look, I'm after Higgs. How do I produce the Higgs? Can we make it collide with another Z boson? Yes, so I do this, you are saying. Okay. I produce the Z boson and then I'll another Z boson. Another, yes. And? And a Higgs. Yes. Sorry that I bug you, but I love to get you involved. So this is how I produce it. This, of course, Z boson, we put a star very often. This is just propagating. That's not a physical particle. This is an off-shell Z boson. This is the uh, kind of a tool to produce. These are physical particles, Z and H. They will, of course, both decay. This decays. I know how to look for particles one. This guy also decays. And I know how it decays. Here it is. It decays into fermions, for example, electrons, muons. Here is the coupling. 
we will talk about how to see it, okay? That's later, I just have to produce it. Then you and I will study the, 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 the K channels and, and think a lot how to see the Higgs, okay? This is the next step. <coughs> I first have to produce it, then I have to think how to see it. Very good. <clears throat> What's the problem? Why couldn't Lab see the Higgs? As you know, LAC saw the Higgs. Here, the characteristic of the machine, there is a circumference, there's the energy. I gave you all the results you need. You have to tell me why I couldn't see the Higgs. Trying to help you. I'm giving you, I cannot give you a bigger hint. The energy is not enough. Yes. It's not enough to have a lot of strength. You have to have enough energy because the energy of lead is 200 5 GV. But the mass of the Z boson plus mass of the Higgs, mass of the Z boson plus mass of the Higgs is how much? 90 plus 125, I'm sorry, this is what? 215 GV, not enough energy. Look at bad luck. You know, at the end of the experiment, the lab people were saying that they see the Higgs they were actually seeing so that MH they say is roughly 115 G. <laughs> and the director decided to make it, whether to go on with the experiment or stop it and start LHC. And the directors, the director had made a wise decision. They stopped the lab and turned the tunnel into the LHC machine. It's the same, it's the same, um, same tunnel. We'll talk about it. This was not there. It's unfortunately for them, but the bad luck. You imagine that you are an experimentalist. You devise a thing, you, you understand everything. By the way, LHC people took everything from the others. Everything was understood, okay? Some, some people were suggesting that they should get Nobel Prize, okay? The most insane suggestion I ever heard. They were just lucky that they had more energy. Okay, that was really an offense to science, this idea. And you spent all your life and you just lack a lousy 10 GV energy. What a bad luck. But there is more to it, by the way. I can do the following also. You see I, how I drew it sort of that. I can also draw, them, draw it like this. Electron and positron coming in. I can say electron is coming in and positron is coming in. So I can produce the Z boson like this. You agree? This is still up. Everybody following me? And there is a Higgs here. Now I have enough energy. The mass of the electron is zero. Look at this bad luck. But cross-section is small. 
we could compute the cross section. It's a lot of work, so let's not let's not do it. It's just it turns out it's too small. They couldn't produce the Higgs. The cross section was too small. By the way, when you have a machine and accelerate, an important comment. The number of events is given by cross section times something which is called luminosity. Sigma L, we call it. Luminosity is the capacity of machine that two beams hit each other. This is physics. So this is cross section. I, I didn't write this well. I'm sorry. Let me write better. I'm sorry. I want you to have cleaner notes. Cross section uh, uh, number of events. It's a cross section. Times luminosity. This is physics, depends on the process you are studying. This is machine property. The bigger the luminosity. So we often define, you know, this is what we write sigma times L. So often people define L as a luminosity per second, you define the number of events, you can define it per second or accumulated. And the uh, remember the unit, the unit of the, let's say the unit of the cross section, as you know, is centimeter square. So the luminosity unit is inverse centimeter square. And often write, this is a luminosity let's write here, often per unit time. People give you per unit time. You can calculate then the time you are interested in because you may do experiment for one month or one year or 10 years. So it's good to know it how much you get every second. And the luminosity of LEP reached about 10 to the 32 centimeters to minus two. This is some number that characterize the lab. I think this was not immediately. As the machine goes on, they keep improving luminosity, okay? They, they you know, engineers and physicists keep understanding better. So luminosity, you understand, is the capacity of a machine that your beam hits another beam. If you don't do it well, you know, the beam may miss completely another beam, obviously. That's an art in that. So it's not just cross-section, let me, let me say. It. You need a big luminosity. So in order to see, you need big sigma, whatever that means, it's some numbers, or big L, or both. You need a big number of events, if you wish. And LEP, unfortunately, I, you just take my word for it. It's, it's, it's boring for us to compute the cross section. So this was the Z boson. Here is cross section, too small with a given luminosity. Bad luck. By the way, there is another possibility. You said Z boson. I don't need the Z boson. I can do this. I can produce the W. So this will be a neutrino. I have a positron entering. This will be a W plus going. No, this will be W minus. I'm sorry. This is E bar. This is new bar. What will this be? This will be W plus. Therefore, I have the famous. Higgs production again, again, small sigma.
really bad luck. These people had bad luck. As the lap was going on, so was Stevatron. So lap is a CERN. The uh, This is a CERN, well, built by CERN. This is Fermilab, LAC CERN, if you wish. Tevatron has more energy. The name tells you Tevatron TV. Enough energy. P plus P bar machine. He was not so big, about seven kilometers. I thought he was 10 actually. And I had, I don't know why I thought he was 10. I thought he was seven miles, but it's seven kilometers. I used to jog there when I would visit Fermilab. And I thought I was jogging more, you know, my, my <laughs> I would tell people I'm jogging about, I didn't discuss where. Anyway, seven kilometers but they have enough energy. The trouble was small cross-section, not enough luminosity, if you wish, as you wish. Again, bad luck. We could enter into these details, but luminosity was similar. I think luminosity was also around 10 to the 32, roughly per square centimeter per second. Comes LHC. Is the same tunnel of left, left tunnel. Twenty-seven kilometers. It is huge. The energy you don't need all of it today is fourteen TV. It was seven TV in two thousand twelve when Higgs was found. The point is that luminosity is ten to the thirty-four. Now it's ten to the thirty-five. You had a much better luminosity. You have a lot of energy. You have everything now, and 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 the rest is history. Higgs discovered luck. Well, this time not luck. They build a machine to make sure that they will discover the Higgs. That's how the energy was chosen. You needed to have a lot of energy. By the way, you, you need more energy than you would think because remember, this is the energy of the protons, the quarks don't carry that energy. There in case some distribution of energy. Higgs discovered in the summer in July 2012. For some of us, although I deeply believe in the Higgs and I made a lot of bets with people and earned a lot of money, that was one of the most important moments in my career. I will never forget what I did the day I was on a beautiful Croatian island, swimming the whole morning and then watching this great moment. The uh, When I say that they, they, you know, you didn't know, you, you had to build it, you didn't know what the Higgs mass was. What you knew, remember mh square, let me just remind you, two lambda v square. Now this lambda cannot be too large, must be perturbative, otherwise there is no theory. By definition, the standard model is a perturbative theory. So that means that lambda square over four pi, the effective coupling should be less than one. And from here you get the Higgs mass limit less than about, I think 800 GV, let's put TV. So that's why they wanted to have a lot of energy. They said, we want to see Higgs, who the hell knows what the mass is. Maybe it's 100, well, it was bigger than 105. 
that was bigger than 105. How do I know that from here? Here you get a lot of cross section in this process. Sigma is big. This is really bad luck because you're producing Z directly. This is a very, very good way of producing it. This is this famous Z factor. Sigma is big, but the luck was, bad luck was not having enough energy. The people at LAC said, no, look, we got to make sure. So we'll build a big machine, a lot of energy. They had a big tunnel already so they could afford this great adventure. And the, uh, and the Higgs mass, of course, this was before experiment. I mean, before experiment. Of course, once you find the Higgs, we'll talk about what it decays into in the moment, but uh, the machine was built so that you see that's why they wanted to have a lot of energy. This is, but do you, you told me, so let's ask our culture, how, how do we really produce the Higgs at, at lab, at, at LHC? So LHC, producing Higgs. Remember, I have a PP bar machine. Inside the proton, there are quarks, but they're also anti-quarks. Why? Because these are quantum mechanical objects, really. This is because of quantum mechanics. As you know, when I say that proton is UUD, of course, there are clouds of Q plus Q bar, A plus A bar, D plus D bar. There are not as many as these. There are more of these, but still not zero. So you can have QQ bar machine. So really LHC. Now the advantage of the Hadron machine, so this is called the Hadron machine, right? LHC is called the Hadron machine. We have, we have types of machine. This is a lepton machine. This is Hadron and Hadron. So you see what it is. Lepton machine is very clean because the physics of electrons, for example, it's, it's understood with an extraordinary precision. The, you may say, why are you even building a, a, a Hadron machine? because you have strong interactions here and they are not easy to understand. So it's, it's a Hadron machine really implies kind of dirty physics. You have to struggle a lot to extract clean information. For example, you cannot study detailed properties of the Higgs boson in a Hadron machine. You cannot study the Z boson at a Hadron machine. You need a lepton machine, which is clean. So why Hadron machine? Why Hadron? Which is dirty. The answer to make discovery. not to get high precision. Why? Because you see, because for new physics, you have a question, what is the mass scale? You don't know. Typically you don't know. The advantage is the energy of the quark 
is not fixed. The energy of the proton is fixed. You see, at the, at the machine like LHC, for example, the energy in the center of mass is 14 TeV. This is of our P plus P, but not for quarks. Energy of the quarks follows non-trivial distributions. And this is very good when you want to discover something new whose precise value you don't know. You want to use the Hadron machine because you can vary the energy. In other words, you can vary energy. You vary the energy. So today there is a there is a clear understanding in the physics community. You build hadron machines first to make discoveries, <laughs> and then you build a, a lepton machine like LEP. A new LEP is being discussed now to make the factory of your discovery. So we will have to build now the the LEP prime, if you wish, the new linear or circular lepton collider, and study the Higgs properties. But for the discovery, machine like LHC is perfect. And how do I produce the, the, well, I can have a quark. I know I have all kinds of tricks. Now I've learned quark, quark emits the Z boson. It can be up or down, it doesn't matter. Quark, quark emits the Z boson. Just like at left, I produce the Higgs. I have enough energy. So this is a way number one to get the Higgs production. I can also use, say, a down quark and produce a, a W minus. use maybe anti-down quarks here, produce W plus, anti-up quark, and then the Higgs. I can use Z or W, okay. That's for sure. Or that's one way. But we were saying, why don't you simply take what we said Like before, Z, you have enough energy. Z, Higgs. Just, just the lap. Here, you don't have to worry about not having enough energy, right? You have enough energy. So this was the problem at lap, but here it's, of course, working great. So this is the... Um, Some of the two in modern way, but 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 very interesting. This is not the main source. It's very interesting. Someone mentioned the top quark. The top quark is fantastic. If I can produce the top quark. I can produce a lot of Higgs. Actually, the way to produce the Higgs, so the main source of H at LHC. is through the top. But how do I produce the top core? Here is a catch. Someone wants to say something. This is a proton. It has this UUD plus a lot of QQ bar plus someone knew actually, someone told me the other day 
What else is inside the proton? The gluons. Gluons. Proton is full of glue. But they couple to top four. That's what they do for the living. And they couple strongly. We have to talk about that. It doesn't matter if you don't know detail, they also couple to the top quark. So this is how you can produce. Imagine this. No, this will be like a photon. This is the, the way we, so this is a gluon. A gluon. G. This is how I produce the top core. It's virtual. Top core couples to Higgs. Of course, I can produce any quark, but the important thing is to have a lot of coupling here. And this you knew. Top quark is very good. Why? Because you cover top is G over two m top over mw and this number is not small this is one it's actually really close to one it's not just a water one because m top is heavier than mw g is smaller than one roughly one g is very close to one this is called the gluon fusion production of H. This is the main source. We could try to do estimates, okay, the important coupling is this, this, this is what we call the strong coupling. Okay, the reason that this is important because alpha strong is G strong square over four pi, and this is not small. We can talk about the numbers. I don't think you guys are not so much into phonology anyway, and putting the numbers would be boring. What we know is that when the dust settles, it's not obvious at all. You have to do the calculation. You pay the price because it's the loop, but then you gain on the couplings. And you gain on the fact that there are a lot of gluons. Just full of glue, the proton. It's very important. And it works beautifully. It's a great source of Higgs. We have a lot of Higgs, okay? This way you get a lot of Higgs. LHC is great in this sense. And this is why the Higgs is studied. Now we have to study the, however, next step is identifying the Higgs. Next step is how to see it. I produce it, but how to see it, which decays I should look at and so on and so forth. I suggest this after the break. Maybe you have some questions. Well, this is fairly straightforward. Today was a little story, right? There was nothing to compute. There was no logic to follow so much. There was no structure. You just had to sort of get a feel for, for all I want you to get a rough feel for what was going on. And then I'll try then to bring you up to date what we know about the Higgs as it's being studied. Okay, if there is no urgent question, you can ask me afterwards. Let's make a break. It's 11.57, let's meet at 12.05 roughly. It will take some second, a minute. Okay, we'll discuss how to see it.
Okay, fellow five, yeah, back. So we need to do this together. You have to help me. Which is the best way to see the Higgs? How to reason? What would be the best way to see it? What can Higgs decay into? What are the main decays in your opinion? Fermion and fermion. Right, which one? Um, lepton and antilepton. Why left? Here is the coupling. The main decay mode should be uh, also the top, top anti-top pair. How heavy is the Higgs? It's around 125 GV. And top? Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, good try. But, but the logic is good. That's what I wanted to hear. So you see what you are trying to say. You are saying the heaviest. So the base way you are saying, look, look at the fermion, fermion bar, and then look at the heaviest fermion, right? Possible. Because why? Because you cover fermion once again, and this you knew, well, is proportional to M fermion. So I need the heaviest possible fermion. I could also try Higgs decaying into W plus plus W minus. That doesn't go through to MW is 160 GV. And MH, we said, is 125 GV. So it doesn't go into Z plus Z. At least not directly. I'll come back to that. I, I, there is something interesting to come back to that, but not directly. So which fermion? So again, you have an idea of the mass is right, roughly. Electron? Is electron good? Can it take it to Big quark. Am I, you're asking me. Why are you asking me? Let me try to understand. <clears throat> no, I'm just assuming. <laughs> right. Of course you can. But it says here, it decays to every fermion. If it has enough mass. And of course it has. Precisely. The best is B plus B bar largest rate very good what is the next one do you know the mass is roughly here's the charm quirk no tau is heavy a little bit it's 
M tau is almost two TV, 1.8. There is champ plus champ bar. That's next to next. Or we should say next in line. M charm is roughly, um, I don't know, 1.5 maybe, maybe a little less, but it's close. Okay, you, you were close there. And then of course there are lighter quarks, but they are, you know, small numbers like strange quark. Okay, there is muon, at least this is clean. Again, next in M muon is, very strange and those quarks, but it's better to speak of 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 of, of mesons, not of a charm. It's heavy enough to speak of a charm quark, and so on and so forth. Do you know how they saw the Higgs in 2012? Does anybody know what they saw? Sorry. Not that they saw a number of things <clears throat> they saw. They didn't see the B quark. This is interesting. They didn't even look at the B quark originally. You know why? The problem with B quarks, they saw an incredible thing that you would never guess unless you know. They saw this two photons. And we have to understand that this is kind of crazy. Now, why? The, the LHC <clears throat> is full of B quarks. So it's very hard to identify them. It took them a lot of time to, to get there. It's also full of tau's because B quark can decay into tau. We can put here, I don't know, maybe charm quark. And then W can give tau and new tau, something like this. So there are a lot of taus because there are a lot of B quarks and so on. And the, and the charm quark is not easy. They still not seeing the charm quark, okay? Charm also full of charm. And the muon, small coupling. This is still being investigated. They're getting there. So strangely enough, what they saw is the photon, a photon you would say, but this is crazy. By the way, how can Higgs couple to a photon? MA zero. So I have a question, how can Higgs couple to a photon? Or gamma if we call it. Who's gonna help? You knew? Someone knew before. How to produce the Higgs? I think Look. with the presence of high energy. Sorry? I think with the presence of high energy. How can energy help me? M photon is zero. The higher energy, the... the the less important becomes the mass. No. But someone told me here, I don't understand. You told me gluons also have a mass zero. Mg is zero. So the question is how does gluon couple 
to a Higgs. It's through the same mechanism. It's through the loop. Good. Look, once I produce the Higgs, it can decay like this. Produce the top quark. Yukawa top is large. So this is top flowing in the loop. By the way, then I can produce two gluons. So Higgs decays into G plus G, but you don't want to use that because LHC is full of glue. It's a proton machine. So this is bad for thing. It's good to produce, but not bad for, not good for seeing. The next you say, oh, but what about this? Again, I do the top quark. Now I can produce photons, top carry. So I can have Higgs going to gamma gamma. By the way, it's a small branching ratio. The branching ratio, that means the decay rate, Higgs going to gamma gamma, which is gamma, Higgs going to gamma gamma from Higgs total, it's very small. I don't think you could guess it, but it's really small. So what they use is somehow fantastic. It's 10 to the minus three, but it is clean. Because you have to back to back, E gamma is MH over two. You will have enhanced cross section precisely going back to back two photons. You take Higgs at rest, compute their great and you have a very clean signal okay so this is incredible this is how they saw it although this is a very small branching ratio by the way there is another loop i can use who can help me which other loop i should use besides stop walk what else can contribute in the loop Today, we are just sort of playing, trying to sort of use our understanding of basic forces. Can we also use W? Of course. I can use any particle that carries. You can tell me, well, use the B quark and so on. Of course, I can use any quark here, by the way, but the Yukawa would be small. W is very good because why? Because charge? No, not because of charge. B quark is also has charge. Sure, charge, I need charge, but something else is important. This coupling is not small. W has a lot of mass. This coupling is a proportional to MW. This coupling is proportional to M top. This is very similar. M top here at the vertex here in W. So you need in the loop, in the loop, you need massive particles, very large mass, as much as possible. And the only candidates are, are the top and the W, okay? There is also anything you want. There is a muon, there is a charm quark, there is anything you like. However, mass is much smaller than MW. MW is our scale. So many, by the way, this one dominates. This is much bigger than the top quark, it turns out. This dominates. And this is a hard calculation. This kind of, of loop diagrams, okay? The, uh, this calculation is not so hard. I gave it sometimes in a take-home exam. 
it's a very hard problem. I'm not saying that everybody does it, but there was always a, a student or two in generation that would do this. It would be sort of for extra credit. Very, it's a little maybe too hard. So when there were generations that were saying that they want to spend more time on the exam, or well, we had to discuss the exam. We can do that tomorrow. So interestingly enough, what has been seen originally, it's a very tiny branching ratio, but very clean. The discovery in 2012, discovery is Higgs going to two gamma. Meanwhile, just to remind you, Higgs, of course, can decay into W plus W, but one has to be virtual, right? I can always, you cannot decay into two on shell, but I can imagine W star, we say, which decays immediately, it's off shell into fermion, anti-fermion, and the real W that lives for a while. It can also be the Z boson. And then we said Higgs decays, the large branching ratios are BB bar and tau tau bar. These are fairly large. We said, and with accumulated luminosity, with accumulated data today, what has been probed. So this is the update. We know, we have checked the Higgs mechanism. That means, what does it mean the Higgs mechanism? Remember, Higgs mechanism, Higgs couples to the mass. This is the essence, the Higgs mechanism. What has been checked is for the W boson. We now know the W boson gets a mass from the Higgs. We know for the Z, we know for the top. Top has a huge mass, that's not surprising. But we also know for bottom and for tau. The gauge bosons and the third generation fermion has been probed. This is the great success of the standard model Higgs picture. Muon, we are getting there. I think it's only a matter of time. I, I, I LSC could even manage, maybe even before the new machine. The other guys, most likely the LSC. Maybe Charm, I'm not sure about Charm. This is to be think, but up, down, strange quark, this is future. This is done. You know, you, you had already an interesting result. Even when you did this, you had an indirect. This is already the W coupling you check here. But going through gamma gamma, it agrees perfectly because you know how to compute the loop and you know how to compute the top loop. So there were already indications from the Higgs going to gamma gamma that you now they accumulated more data. And this is now with excellent precision. I'll try to find a, a maybe to send you a, a plot. So that you see the agreement is excellent.
the rest of the course, I will pretend that the Higgs mechanism has been discovered. You and I, you can say, well, maybe for second generation, it's not true and no one, okay. <laughs> maybe it will be a great discovery or shock if it doesn't work. And you may even like it, you're saying something new, but for the moment, let's assume. So in other words, we go on, assume, study a little bit, standard model is a Higgs theory. I hate to start new things when there is little time. I'm happy with what I told you. I don't want you to. So I won't go into more of the boring detail. I will leave it here and 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 have you ask questions if you want to hear more. Yes, Professor, I have a question from the beginning, uh, in the beginning of the lecture. You mentioned yes. that uh, uh, we can think of Higgs mechanism as a way of normalization, but I didn't get it why. Uh, sorry, sorry, we can think of the Higgs mechanism. As a way uh, to normalize like standard model, but I didn't, I didn't understand, I mean, why you said that. Uh, because I remember, I mean, in the QFT course that uh, uh, we use the normalizations because when we introduce like for some some parameters in the, our Lagrangian uh, then we see that uh, they are not physical so when we do this two calculations then like uh, we we get uh, physical quantities so is that what you mean or I'm not sure what you're asking me I'm, I'm I'll try to Okay, maybe I can write it later. Uh, no, 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 I will try to, um, you can ask me more. I will try to tell you what I, it's not what I said today, it's what we discussed. Remember, there were three lectures on this. Um, it's just today I made a very quick summary of, I didn't do any justice to this profound issue. I said today, Without the Higgs mechanism, if I just give the Z boson a mass, I get this propagator, okay? I'm gonna try to say things and you tell me if that's what you're asking me. I'm not sure what precisely you're asking me. So, so I'll try to say it here. So this is what I meant. If, if in the usual picture without the Higgs, the Broca theory. This would be the Z boson propagator. And this has a bit bad high energy behavior. Okay, let's let's try to uh, maybe we write once again one last time. Today we can come back to it. But here Higgs in nutshell. in nutshell. Imagine I have a U1 theory of massive A field, it's called Broca. We said that Lagrangian is minus a quarter F mu nu, F mu nu plus one half ma square a mu, a mu. From here, we computed the propagate. Delta mu nu proca of a proportional to g mu nu 
minus k mu k nu over ma square over k square minus ma square. So the first piece is okay. There are two pieces. The first piece goes as one over k square for large k. The second piece, you see that goes as one over ma square for large k. You agree with this? Yes. This is not good. It doesn't go down, it doesn't go to zero. So in other words, when you do loops, whatever loops, for example, typical loop will live with it with two, two gauge fields, I will have to integrate over k and I will have twice the propagator and so on. And this will not vanish fast enough. So you get infinity. In order to get a finite result, integrals must vanish. So the theory is that I want to compute an amplitude, I get an infinity. This is not a good theory. Renormalizable is just a name, not a good. Good we call renormalizable. This is this. In the Higgs theory, this was Broca. This is Broca. I can say the same thing for the Higgs theory. Higgs of massive A. I start with some scalar field with a potential and no master. There is no master for the gauge field, MA zero. But from the potential, I find that phi is non-zero. The vacuum expectation value, and I find out that MA square is G square phi square. I got the mass. All I said that in this theory, because of the gauge invariance, you see, this theory is gauge invariant. Just write phi V plus H plus IG. You have a gauge symmetry. You need gauge fixing as in QED. So you add the gauge fixing term. And now you get a good propagate. Okay, I got it. I had a misconception. You get good propagators. So what I'm saying, you are saying, but all of this you are telling me because you are keeping G, G is not physical. So I have five degrees of freedom. I have A mu four degrees of freedom plus G. So this is five degrees of freedom. I reduce to three by gauge fixing. This is complete equivalence with QED, which you learned and accepted, in which I have A mu, four degrees of freedom, but I reduce to two through gauge fix. Two are physical because it's a massless, massless photon, three physical. So you have a full analogy. The same way that QED works, also the spontaneously broken theory works. Coleman used to say, who was great divulgator of these ideas, okay, great teacher. He was saying, don't call it spontaneous breaking, call it hidden symmetry. There is a hidden symmetry. 
you can rewrite the theory so that the symmetry is hidden, like we, the way we do in QED. I hope that's clear. I will stop at this point unless you ask me more. Any other question? Okay, if oh by the way, we, I can also ask you today. Normally I offer people a take-home exam up to now in all of my basically 30 years at ICDP, everybody opted for the take home. You take between four to seven days, depends how you feel about it. By the way, with the with the uh, with the online teaching, this is actually fits perfectly. So you should think about that, and if you tell me if you have some reservations, if you don't like it, write to me. Let's do the following: if 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 you don't write, I will assume that you like the idea of a take home rather than in class, few hours exam. Okay. If you have any questions about it, you should ask me. You can ask now, or any thought about it, we can. That when will help you. Uh, when the exam is gonna be? Oh, I don't know. Depends how you know. We have to organize it with you guys. We can, we have to think of other exams. Are, are, is any other exam fixed for this term? So far, no. Huh? Well, then we can, you know, we can start to fight for the preference. If you have any preference, you should. If you have a preference, please let me know. Whether you want to stay home before or after the others. Any thoughts? We don't, we will not decide now. Okay, you should guys, you should sleep on it. Think about it, think whether you like the take home and if you do, then we could schedule it. If, and then we, you know, we'll make a poll, we'll see how you feel. 